And we had a few gay characters, like on TV and shit, yeah. or, in, or in the movies. Mm -hmm. But if it was, you know, they definitely weren't black. So. No, that's a fact. <laughs> we'll set it off. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, you know, all the black parents probably used to look at that part and be like, look at that shame. I know. Shame. All that sinning. <laughs> What's up y'all? Welcome back to our channel. We are The Muses for those of you who are new to our channel and we want to just take this time and thank all of our subscribers, everyone for your comments. Like, I know, I love how like everybody enjoys watching the videos. Yeah, every time we go out, y'all just giving us like all these kind of compliments about the content we're dropping and we appreciate that because it motivates us and inspires us to keep it going. Yeah. And trust me, we're listening. Um, everyone pretty much said they wanted to hear about you know your previous my ex marriage so. um, my, which happens to be my children's father yeah and so, so we'll get into that later stay tuned but make sure you click the notification button the subscribe button the like and comment like she said yeah so let's get into it yeah so this is pretty much like our coming out story as, as you saw in the title um your story kind of ties into it so we thought like why not just tell what our coming out story was like so that's what this is. Um, What's your coming out? Did you come out? So, in a weird way, I kind of outed myself in a little bit. So, like, I've had, like, previous experiences, like, when I was in middle school. And then, you know, being into high school, I kind of, like, I felt pressured for my mom to, like, you know, like they always do, um, you know, talk, date a guy have a boyfriend just so you know because she kept telling me oh it's a phase it's a phase and for a while you know you start to believe that and I was like okay yeah she's right so I'll go to this school that's not near my neighborhood or near the girl who I was talking to in middle school and you know I'll start to date boys so you know maybe she'll get off my back and leave me alone <laughs> yeah right and then I dated boys like my freshman year sophomore year had a boyfriend and all but it was my junior year that, you know, girl caught my eye and I kind of pursued that relationship and we were in a relationship from my junior year. Not my junior year, we didn't start dating to my senior year of high school, but we were in a relationship for six years after our senior year. But my senior year, so I'm not sure if everybody's familiar, but like, you know, when I was captain of the cheerleading squad, I was Miss First Coast. So Miss First Coast is pretty much like the pageant or like your school person like a the it girl so I was Miss First Coast I won for my senior year so I was like I had all these titles and I was in the relationship with my girlfriend and you know we were talking to each other we were texting and it wasn't quite popular at the time to date a girl or to be out the gay realm at the time, even though it wasn't sure. even though I graduated like in 2007 even though it wasn't like so long ago but it still wasn't a thing and i just remember one day we were in school i don't know what made me do it or what made me even think that word wouldn't get back to my mom but school let out she had a car and all the seniors you know got to the parking lot so you know i just got tired of us always having to show affection in between classes like you know we would, you know, set up times to leave class, to meet up. It was never when, you know, in between the classes when the bell rung and everybody was out. We always had to sneak and do it. And I guess I just got tired of sneaking and doing it. And, you know, I just went out to the parking lot, saw her, and <laughs> she was about to go. And I was like, you know, shoot, fuck it. <laughs> I'm finna kiss you. And we just sat there and we like made out in the parking lot. When I tell you, everybody, was like, cause I think people were like heard rumors and maybe thought that okay, yeah, yeah maybe yeah. they're together. But when they seen that, first of all, nobody ever seen that. Let alone two black girls in the school, like just sitting there in the middle of the parking lot, straight, like just kissing. And you know, I just did it and you I feel think, free. Why you was doing I felt it when you feel nervous? I felt fearless and I don't think it had really anything to do with my relationship. I think it had a lot to do with me and what I needed to do for me. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't even about who it was, but you know, crush she was my girlfriend, I wanted to kiss her, but yeah, I just did it. And it, I do have a tendency to like do things without thinking of <laughs> the consequences afterwards because- Well, that's, a, that's an aquarium. You know, it never clicked in my mind like, I feel like wait, the consequences. <laughs> people are gonna tell my mom. So yeah, cause at the time my mom was working at the high school. So 
yeah, eventually where it did get back no, to her. That's that. crazy. Yeah, you your daughter. Know. Yeah, I know because they was just like, oh, you around here think your daughter, oh, Miss First Coast, and she's just so untouchable. But no, yeah, your daughter gay. Yeah, she gay. Yeah, you got a gay daughter. Like, I mean, <laughs> like it was a bad thing. Like it was, a, yeah, it was a bad thing. Yeah. And I think yeah. because of how people push it on my mom, it made her think that it was that way. But that's pretty much how I outed myself. So did you it's get like in trouble. I mean, yeah, of course, you know, at the, um, my mom has evolved since then, y'all. Let's just say, this is like past tense, you know. Yes, our parents, I, we, I, we love, yeah. I love your mother. Your mother did, she did an amazing job raising you. Yeah. Thanks, mom, shout out to you. But, yeah, it, yeah, she, she didn't agree with it, you know, but, like I said, that was then. But, yeah. you know, I was on punishment, of course, but it ain't stopped nothing. Facts. <laughs> I still sneaked and did what I wanted to do, so, but... That's pretty much my story. I pretty much outed myself so, but the sucky part about it is in school, they took all of my privileges away from me. Like as the lady of the school, you know, you usually do the afternoon announcements and you speak at all these engagements for the school and they took all of that away from me. I really didn't do anything. Because you were gay. Yeah. Outwardly gay. Yeah, it was just like, oh, we can't have that. Well, you speaking now, baby. I'm speaking, well. <laughs> I'm speaking everywhere. I'm speaking worldwide. I'm everywhere. All over the world. So how about that? Sure. Okay, I'm very, first of all, let me say that I'm very proud of you for being fearless. Another Aquarius trait. <laughs> and, you know, being who you were at such an early age, I really do wish that I had that level of courage or bravery at that age. Maybe it's just like, I don't know. I could never. Environment, maybe? Maybe. Know. And I think also, like, towards the later end of the 2000s, it was starting to become a little bit more acceptable to, to be in a same-sex relationship or a queer relationship. Yeah. So, that's dope. I mean, Ellen was out by then, and we had a few gay characters, like on TV and shit, yeah. or, in, or in the movies. Mm -hmm. But if it was, you know, they definitely weren't black. So. No, that's a fact. <laughs> we'll set it off. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, you know, all the black parents probably used to look at that part and be like, look at that shame. I know. Shame. All that sin. <laughs> all right, so this is what y'all been waiting for. Um, I don't think I've ever actually talked in depth about mm -hmm. about Thank their you. father. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, I've already spoken to my daughters and asked their permission if, it, if they felt okay with me telling the story of their father because they do have a uh, relationship with him and you know I just don't never want to get in between that so because it is like important to have I think uh, your child's father in their life I grew up with my dad happy father's day to all yeah. the dads out there um so I didn't grow up with my dad so <laughs> but it's okay <laughs> it's okay baby I'm it's okay <laughs> funny <laughs> um okay so let's get this over with <sighs> okay so basically a lot of you know um i'm a preacher's kid i grew up in the south we both we both grew up in florida yeah and um i grew up when hell the only thing i ever seen on television that was a little bit resemblance of queer of a queer relationship was the color purple when so, sugar and silly yeah. was kissing and i was just like oh still my favorite movie to this day but um, I wish they would have showed the sex scene in that. But I know the book is it goes really you deep into that. their I relationship. Need to read the book. I need to read the book. Mm -hmm. So I mean, they were on a whole fucking thing. Okay, but so basically, this is how it all started. I grew up in a very strict home, um, very very guarded. Um, I couldn't wear pants, makeup, jewelry, go to the movies, go to prom, Damn. dance. I only was I was only allowed to focus on school, church, and home all the way up through my 18 years. So I say that to say I was very sheltered, um, and that stems from a lot of. Um, I guess my mother was just thinking she was doing the best she could. Yeah, probably protect to you protect because they grew up in yeah. like a hard era as black people, and so especially like my mother grew up in Jim Crow South, and it was just like very traumatic. Yeah. So she wanted to guard us, and I, you know, this is me in hindsight looking back now, but when I was going through, it was fucking right. hell. And you were the first. I was the firstborn, yeah, so you yeah. know how that is. I oh, mm. so whew, basically, I wasn't allowed to date boys. It was never a thing where, oh, you get to have a boyfriend or, oh, you get to go. Dancing was a sin. Every, everything was a fucking sin. Mm. So, girl, ever since I remember, I was attracted to girls. I got in trouble in pre-K for kissing a girl. I got in, I got a, my mother caught me and a girl three times when, before the age of 12. 
and the last time that she caught me I got such a bad whooping um, and a lot of threats and I just think my, my mother at the time didn't really know how to handle it having a queer child I mean I was the preacher's kid we had a an appearance to uphold and you know it was um it was really something that was beat out of me and kind of really traumatic to still kind of talk about I went I went through a lot of years of therapy and um, she basically I was listen I was gonna learn how to f fuck niggas after that I was trying to get into heaven I remember like literally at 13 14 all my little friends was around me like oh he's so cute or he's so cute or he's so cute and it was like well I guess I gotta make myself think boys are cute like I'm gonna fucking go to heaven I'm not going to hell like right. it was I had to write Bible scriptures Bible verses after the beatings and like just basically she just tried to purge it out of me it was so I won't even go into detail so their father is is a guy who also grew up in the same church and I was born in this church he um I sang in a choir and it was a pretty big church and um he played the drums he's about maybe three or four years older than me mm -hmm. so it, if you know anything about being the oldest child the guinea pig and like the fucking the poster child that made all the good grades like it seemed exactly that could, yeah it was like I was the chosen one that was going to be you know it was it was a lot of pressure and I just wanted to be myself art was my only free freedom I could only feel free in my room locked up for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours just drawing because I wasn't allowed to talk on the phone I shit I couldn't even go outside really so um I mean backtrack so now I'm 18 um, I got I got a scholarship to um, UF and I was about to head out graduated about to head out finally leaving <sighs> started talking to him mm -hmm. um, he was in the church so it was kind of like well damn I'm 18 now maybe I can kind of get out a little bit he was what I ca would call at 18 years old one of my best friends we grew up together his mom taught me in Sunday school you know cool nigga whatever and I really he was the first person I came out to and I wanted to I wanted him to not I guess judge me and he didn't so because he didn't judge me and I didn't judge him with his secrets we just kind of really became really close friends one day he came over and he was just I just got fed up you ever just have this moment of impulse where you just well, yeah that's what it was you just get tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired exactly so I, he would he would sneak over to the house when my parents was at work 18 now keep in mind and I, I still had to ask to go in my backyard it was pathetic so <laughs> he was like he would come over and then one day I think he brought me some like fast food and I was just sitting in my room babysitting my little sister and I was just like man I'm sick of this shit he was like what you talking about I was like I'm, I'm, I can't handle it no more fuck this and I just got up I got up, I packed the bag, and he tried to talk me out of it. And I was like, no, I can't take this anymore. Like, I was so done living there. I left. Those were the best two weeks of my life. First time I ever had a little taste of freedom. Probably gave my parents a goddamn heart attack. Um, but so be it. Uh, we, we rushed. It was a lot of, like, chaos trying to come back. I went to school for, like, two semesters. Um, he joined the military and got orders to California. And that was my take it out. I uh, some things happened in school um, because I guess I was so sheltered and didn't really have experience with watching or no, learn, learning who to stay away from I didn't know that you weren't allowed to like let people make your drinks I didn't know shit I was, it was like I was pushed into the world with no kind of fucking street training at all I had to teach myself yeah. so basically long story short um, I was drugged so I pretty much left I left school after that he had orders to Cali. We moved to Cali. I've always known I wanted to have kids. They were both planned. Um, long story short, we probably stayed together maybe a year after my second baby was born. And even at that, like it was, he still knew about me. He still knew my desires and, and what I really, really, really like. That you really like women. Yeah, and I, I it was just. A friendship arrangement ship and then it got really toxic after he was just like I, okay so back it up I had my baby my youngest baby I'm gonna make this quick um, I was working at a daycare center and my daughter's infant teacher at the time she was probably six months old mm -hmm. my daughter's infant teacher I 
You thought she was a fine piece of I head. did. I did. And I ain't no, I ain't no really know how to approach girls. Yeah. I was still very young. She comes to the house one day, we come closer friends, we're flirting, taking trips and shit. And she's not gay. She's in a relationship with a dude too and got kids. Mm -hmm. And so she's at the house, she gets, I get up to do something on the TV and she goes home. He then says, after she leaves, she wants you. And I was like, why, why would you say that? Mm -hmm. And he goes, um, I see how she was staring at you. She wants you. I dare you to pick up the phone and call her right now. I promise you. I'll pay for the hotel room. I'll pay for the bottles. I'll pay for everything. I promise you. And I was like, no, nah, I was so fucking scared. He was, like, I, he was like, do it, do it, do it. Standing at the edge of the bed. So I picked up the phone. I'm calling the girl. I'm like, hey, man, I got something to tell you, man. But I don't want it to affect our friendship. And he, don't, he, he just excited on the side mm -hmm. and so she's like adrian i know what you want and let's get a room tonight he's like told you i told you i told you period he paid for the room he paid for the bottles we get to the room i i blossomed like a lotus flower <laughs> <laughs> i was in that pussy all night long <laughs> Until the sun came up. And I guess he thought it was gonna be like a, a threesome type thing. Maybe hopefully yeah. later or yeah. or at least like a let let's let it come out of your system. Yeah. No baby. Every time he went to sleep. Every night he went to sleep. And my babies would sleep. I got in that car and we was fucking at least for a year. Mm. Until he finally caught me. I guess he got mad. He knew it was a thing. And then I remember like just crying in the shower. It's like I can't do this no more. It's gotta it's gotta be I gotta be who I am. Yeah. And you know, he pretty much hated that, of course. I guess it was a bruise to his ego. And yeah, because it's like like we said, what guy wants to be, be the left. last guy? Right. And then it's like, oh Yeah, I mean we were kids, you know what I'm saying? We were young kids, yeah. um, trying to get into heaven and trying to do what was pushed and programmed into our minds. You know, you, you go to college, you get married, you have kids, you, you, and then you walk into the kingdom of God. And that's how we were bred. And it was just like a whole bunch of years of therapy and just deprogramming, but it got really toxic. He outed me to the, anyone who would listen, uh, including my parents, um, just anyone who would listen. He, she's, your daughter's a DI, I won't say it, yeah. or D-Y-K-E. Uh, she, just really tarnished my name. I had a horrible relationship with my parents for like the next five, six years. And God knows to this day, I would have never thought that everyone in that situation, my parents, him, um, me, you, everyone just kind of evolved to this space where y'all just gonna have to let me be me mm -hmm. or you can't be in my life. So I thank God for the growth. I thank myself or the strength and to be who I really am. The girl I was sleeping with, she's still with me. I know so many women who are very afraid to just be themselves. Yeah, that sucks. But it's like, you know, I mean, of course it sucks when your parents don't support you, but at the same time, you right. still got to stay true to yourself. You still have to live your life. And I just think, well, you know, for some of us, we just can't take it. We just reach a point where we just like, no, enough is enough. enough is I'm okay. I like girls. And, and I always liked girls. Yeah, and I'm not going to keep putting myself in these forceful positions to make you happy. It like, ain't. People, you have to it stop living happen. your life for other people because they're going to do what they're going to do. And you then they're all, your yeah, life exactly. And they're going to die. Yeah. And, and, and if I heard a quote one day that it was just like, you know, if you realize how quickly people forget you when you're dead, you'll start to live your life a little bit more free, freely. And you have to like find the bravery in you. Now, we're not saying that you have to come out. Yeah. Definitely so please, stay that. Yes. please stay, stay safe. Please stay safe. If you're struggling with coming out, you know, take your time, do it in the best way that fits your situation. Basically, like, basically, if you're young and you, and you are independent of your family and you know that they're going to be against you, and if you can, just keep keep it to yourself. If you can't, be free, baby. You know what I'm yeah. saying? We aunties got you. Yeah, We're here we to do. support you. We love you. Um, happy Pride. Happy but Pride. if you can't do that, that's okay. It doesn't make you any less queer. Yeah. You just have to suck them dry until you can... Yeah. Depend on yourself. And move when you're ready. Exactly. You know, I think every day your life should be lived doing things that make you the happiest each day Agreed. and live each day, like they say, as if it's your last. Like, you know, of course, I know we like to plan for the future and all these things, but start taking time to 
for yourself self-care every day to do things that make you happy because if you're a happy person and if you love yourself then the person that you're bringing into your life is only going to blossom that into even more love like you can't you know so i definitely want to push like love and positivity for all of that like exactly and it's just important just love yourself and like she said even and through the dark times i know even, that's what i was just about to say it might be dark it might seem dark um but it does get better it i does. promise you it does get better hold on be strong it ain't just humming <laughs> <laughs> Until then, don't worry about the face. Come on, when the troubles of life. I'm trying to figure out what song you're no. singing. I can't catch it. Hold on. Hold on, song I'm singing. Mm -hmm. Change is coming, change is coming. What song she's singing, y'all? You know it. Don't worry about a thing. Who sang that? Hell, if I know. I don't know, because you're Anyways, wrong. Anyways, I know I'm probably wrong key, you know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but. Thanks so much, y'all, for watching this video. We gonna wrap it up. Yeah, we are. Also, I don't know if some of y'all do follow us on social media, but if you don't, our Instagrams will be here and also in the description box below. But we are having a Juneteenth sale, y'all. Yes, happy Juneteenth. Yes, happy Juneteenth to everyone. Well, I don't know if I'm gonna say everyone, but... Happy Juneteenth. <laughs> We're having a 40% off sale on the entire site. Sorry, it's so much art that we've restocked. Take a look. Uh, the, we, the web link is also down below. Yes. Uh, Madamuse.la if you don't have the link. But take advantage, y'all. I will keep it up for a few more days. Yeah, but yeah, definitely. We love you. We appreciate all your support. Comment down below. Tell us, yes. you know, if you have a coming out story or what was Ooh, your experience yeah, like. If you want that. to tell us, you know, I'm, I'm definitely interested in learning. I like to respond to comments. You yes, know, we, we like to engage with you all. So, you know, I just want to hear from you. I, because of Pride, you know, we thought this would be a great video to talk about her story time and talk about what our coming out story was like. So. Yes, and I just want to say again, thanks so much for watching. We love y'all. Thank you, you for the support. Absolutely. If there's anything else that you would like for us to have a story time about, drop it in the comments as well. And until the next time, we're going to see you later.